Hello everybody, welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today in deck number 382, we're going to talk about Jannara, Asura of War. Now 3 mana 3, 3 flying is not bad. Especially for an angel, which is why uh, you're looking at this version from the Vault Angels here. But a colus and a white colon to put a counter on itself. So that's that's really good. So it is a three color commander that has evasion and pumps itself up so naturally with white and blue and green I wanted to go with the plus one plus one counter route but first let's get through our ramp like we do we have got only two land fetches in Farseek and Evage then of course we have the Celestna Signet, Simic Signet, the Locket the sphere and the soul ring don't have a whole lot of actual ramp in there because we don't have a whole lot of expensive stuff to be honest with you but first let's look at our creatures that in some shape or form deal with plus one plus one counters we have shapers of nature put a counter on take counter off hey not bad it's got a little bit of card draw there if you want it bad enough. Enduring Scale Lord. Whoa. So when something else gets a counter, he gets another counter. So that's that can get ridiculous in a hurry, and especially on a flying body. Ravenous Slime is a good one. If a creature an opponent controls would die, instead exile it. So there's some some control right there from uh, reanimator decks or what have you and then it gets that many counters wow of course Manigors your Hydra Protean Hydra those are pretty pretty standard Ivy Elemental <coughs> for some reason not a Hydra I guess because it could have been an Elemental Hydra I guess no those are two races and not classes I guess anyway there's always room for more scoop bugs. <sighs> These things can get ridiculous. Nobody thinks about a scoop mob on turn, you know, the early turns when it's a 1-1, one, one, but when they look up and it's a 5-5 five, five and they it dawns on them that it's only going to get bigger, it becomes a problem. And hey, if they want to trade a awesome removal spell for my scoop mob, more power to them. Loyal Guardian. If you control your commander, hey, counter your team. Whoa. Vigor is, I mean, just if damage would be dealt, so it prevents all damage, whether it's combat damage, spell damage, whatever. Just prevent the damage, and, you know, it gets counters. Um, kind of makes me wish there was red in here for uh, pyroclasm type effects. Pyrohemia, especially. I love this one. They have trample. I mean, Jannar's big and all, but does not have trample because, you know, flyers are pretty common. Crassus. When it evolves, put a counter on everything that's already got a counter. That's that's awesome. Of course, Prime Speaker Zagana is about the way to go for, you know, plus one counters. Black Caster. This one is beautiful. Target creature with a plus one plus one counter on it can't be the target of spells or abilities. It says the shroud. Whoa. Deep root. Cast a non-creature spell. Put a counter on this. That's uh, to be honest with you, this might be the weaker portion because most of what we have are creatures. So I mean, it's gonna get a few, I guess. But undergrowth champion. Nimbus Swimmer, Experiment One, Alter Ego. Now the Herald, I really like the Herald just because it's better than Trample. Hey, Janara, you go right ahead. Ain't nobody blocking you. Feral Hydra, Gilder Baron. The Battle Priest is another good one. Lifelink. Because there's Lifelink, it's not going to. It's not going to win you the game, 
just incidental life link. I mean, if you built the deck around it, anything can win you the game. But it will let you live through a cra if you're going to eliminate a player and are scared about the crackback from the other players, the amount of damage you're doing, your game that much life, it's probably going to allow you to live to see your next turn. Voral. Sure, why not? Let's talk about Pell Collector. I have had my eye on this guy. I don't really do the whole finance thing. Y'all know that. But about a month ago, I said, you know what? Pell Collector. It was worth about two bucks at the time. I think now it's about four or five. So I don't know. And it's a Pell Collector. It, if I was a finance guy and I had a, a spec out there, it would be Pell Collector. Because I believe this will get, I don't know, six to ten. Somewhere there around. I realize that's a big range, but um, we have got the next Ravnica set coming in just a little while. And that's going to have Simic in it. And Simic has always played with 1 1 counters. Now, uh, at the time of recording this, because I'm recording this several days out to, you know, try to get through the holidays and whatnot. We have seen three or four Simic cards for the new set, and I think that's what's experienced this a little bit. By the time that this goes live, by the time you're watching it, it may be more. I, I may be way shy. I don't know. But I think Pell Collector, it fits here wonderfully, but I think it fits in a lot of places wonderfully, too. The Bonkin. Now, the, giving them first strike, pretty good experiment cry crash cry crack i don't know the experiment yeah we'll call it 626 experiment 626 there we go has all activated abilities of you know everything so it'll have janara's two mana coal and put a counter on it so it can get really big itself you know, it'll have some of the others here and there. And then, you know, just to put a counter on something. Sure, why not? Now, just in case all those didn't have enough enough counters on it, you can spend 8 mana for a 3-8 Force Walker. What? But that ability is sick. I don't know. I don't know if the ability justifies the casting cost. But it's still pretty good. Pay extra mana for that many counters. Now, we have uh, some artifact creatures in Triskelion, Pentavus, and Hangerback Walker. But let's talk about Walking Archive, because that's our card draw. That's our, our walking, breathing, howling mind. That we can, you know, get really, really big with. But now it, it is symmetrical. Everybody gets to do it. But there's a good chance the Walking Archive is just not going to die. Because nobody wants to kill it. Now, things that mess with counters or add counters or whatever. Other stuff, I, I guess. We're going to start with Primal Vigor. It's a good card, especially for plus one counters. Now, I didn't go the token route. That was, what was that, last deck at this point? But straight counters, you know what else is good for counters? Good old doubling season. I know, I know, I should have put the doubling season in the, in the previous deck, but the reason why I wanted doubling season in here is because we got blue in it. And blue gets us a copy enchantment so that we can copy the doubling season because that's fun. Plea for Guidance is going to let us search them out. Uh, Swift Foot Boots keeps our commander safe. Uh, incremental Growth just puts counters out on. And Savagery is, just puts a ton of counters on one thing, twice. Um, Congregation at Dawn can tutor you up some of those. Uh, it's kind of a toolboxy thing there with those little small guys that give plus one plus one counter creatures an ability or whatnot. 
Hinder vines is probably one of the more unfair fogs I've ever seen uh, because uh, our team's still going to do damage, but your team's not. Citadel Siege is just going to every upkeep going to get you two counters. It has another mode, I'm sure. Um, yeah, not in this deck. Overwhelming Stampede. X is the greatest power among creatures you control. We're talking mounted up counters on stuff now. Overwhelming Stampede is just a game ender right there. Privileged Position. Going to keep our stuff safe. Gleam of Authority. <clears throat> I had to read this one a couple times. Because I don't know that I've ever put it in a deck before. That's it's what I try to do is I, I I try to include a card I've never cast before, I've never played with before in, in, in a deck, just so that I can, you know. But this one, Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus one for each counter on other creatures. Do you know how sick this be? This this is going to turn Janara into a, a one-shot killer. Then, of course, we have Finest Hour if the uh, one shot didn't do it, or, or if you need to eliminate one and then a second player, whatever. But keep in mind, the Exalted Trigger is going to stack. So the first combat, you're going to declare Janara as an attacker, Exalted will trigger in, it gets plus one. And then you're going to untap it, declare it as attacker again, the Exalted will kick in again. So it'll, it'll get another plus one until end of turn. So let's look at some removal. Uh, not too much board wipes. Day and Nova and Verdict. But I do have a little bit of... I'm not r running real counter heavy. Void Slime, Render Silent, and Negate. Of course, there's our Naturalize. But now... Ancient Animus is worth talking about. Is this not exactly what we want to do? It's like they made this card of Dominera for us, uh, for Janara years later. I, I, okay. This is removal. This is exactly what I consider it to be. Okay. Let's get to lands. We don't have a whole lot of like cool lands or anything. It's just mana production. Um, let's go through our. Blue. I think I got them separated in blue, green, or you know by what they are. Uh, did kind of lean heavier. Here's one of the um, enemy color pain lands from Tempest. Uh, I was telling you about in the last video. And then, of course, we have the good old-fashioned pain lands from the Ice Age that have been reprinted a bunch. Not enough, but a bunch. Is that pumpkins? That is pumpkins. How have I been playing this game for 24 years and I've just now noticed there's pumpkins on Brushland? Wow. Anyway, green-white. Stirring Wildwood. Yeah, I like the Canopy Vista the uh, because they're, yeah, it's probably in this deck going to come into play tapped just simply because it's, uh, I mean, we have a lot of non-basics. I thought about running that, what is it, prize amalgam, the number of, uh, you know, differently, but it, it didn't deal with counters. It, it didn't feel very on theme, so I didn't. Blossoming Sands. Whoop. Tranquil Expanse. Now we get into white blue. Uh, Prairie Stream, Irrigated Farmland, and then the any colors of the, the Spire, the Promenade, Command Tower, Terramorphic, Evolving, and the Ultimate Panorama. So that is what I have got. I believe this video is going to go out on New Year's Eve. So y'all be safe. And since it's a odd number day thing, I guess I will see you tomorrow with another deck. As of right now, I'm caught up. I, I had uh, built a bunch up and recorded it up. I'm still recording well before Christmas now. So uh, 
I'll have some time with with the kiddos and the wife and family and maybe I can sneak in time to build a deck but I've just about bought myself a week here so uh, it helps when possible to maybe to maybe we get I was thinking that sometimes wizards will do really cool stuff and because they shut down uh, they shut down for the holidays for so long and I'm thinking that sometimes on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or something, they'll release like a spoiler, you know, a really cool spoiler, maybe New Year's Day. Don't know. But maybe we'll know some more about the next set. Right now, we know that there are two legends in it. Lavinia, who is ridiculous. And oh, what's the other one? Zagana. So, don't know how many more because they are using some of the walkers as guild leaders like they did. So, don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I'm excited about it. Of course, it's me. I'm a magic player. I get excited about every set. So, y'all let me know what you think. But I think right now, we're going to shuffle and cut. <laughs> 